big print, you just might be a narcissist. <laughs> the slide I would like to show now, but I don't have it, would be a picture of all the organizers behind this event. These people have spent two months going without sleep, getting us ready. People like Rob, Leora, Dex, Angela, Lisa, and many more. Let's have a round of applause for them. <clears throat> so in our TEDx training, they warned us not to do what's called the fig leaf posture. <laughs> And they said, no reverse fig leaf posture. <laughs> no, no hand signals like this, like you're carrying a tray. And none of this, like you're fencing with somebody. The, um, when, I, when I flew in on uh, Thursday, uh, I got a story. I um, got my rental car. And the people there said, uh, careful on Saturday, there's going to be a TEDx event. I, I said, thanks for that tip. <laughs> They're not a paid sponsor, so I can't say their name. But they were a very enterprising group of people. <laughs> hang, hang on a second. The control room is sending me a message. The man behind the curtain is saying, cute creativity improv. Don't forget your talk. OK, Dex, one more thing. I saw a baby in the second row. Right here. How old is that baby? Five months. Five, is it a boy or a girl? A girl. What's her name? Amarin. Amarin, I dedicate my speech to you. This is about your future. Yeah, I hear Dex, I'm starting now. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Hello, Sedona, Arizona. I'd like to ask you, why did the robot with artificial intelligence cross the road to fire a human and take their job? That's why I'm here today. Leading publications like Forbes Magazine and the New York Times are reporting that robots and AI are already taking over jobs for many humans. Leading publications are reporting that in the near future, your job and your child's job might be taken over by robots and AI. I haven't seen anybody reporting on a solution. That is my crusade. I'm a teacher. I teach creativity. What's the one skill that robots and AI do not have? Creativity. What's the one skill that's not being taught in most of our schools? Creativity techniques and out-of-the-box thinking. I'm not talking about classes in creative art and creative music. Those are very important. What I'm talking about are classes about creativity techniques, like mind mapping, lateral thinking, brainstorming, attribute listing, and many, many more. If you think of your brain as a sponge, this is what our schools are very good at, pouring data into student brains. And they do that so the students can take the tests to see how much data is in their brains. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you concur. This is what schools are not good at. This is not meant to be a piece of art. This is meant to show that schools are not good at teaching students how to squeeze their brain 
with a creative output. These colors represent the creative output of creative minds. These colors represent the invention of the steam engine, the polio vaccine, putting humans on the moon. That's what this represents. I know that schools are not teaching creativity techniques because I'm a former high school teacher. I was in the system. I was reprimanded repeatedly for not using mathematical language. I was using creative language. I also know because in my travels, when I meet students, I like to ask them, what classes are you taking that teach you creativity, out of the box thinking, how to be funny, how to have fun with your mind, and they tell me no such classes. And school is boring. Then they ask me a very good question. They say, why should they care about creativity? And I tell them that the number one survival skill in the 21st century is creativity. And then they ask another very good question. Why aren't there schools teaching creativity? And I explain, our school system was set up 150 years ago to train factory workers for the rapidly expanding Industrial Revolution. At that time, it made sense to just teach reading, writing, and arithmetic. No creativity techniques. In fact, creative people would have made bad factory workers. The students were told to line up, sit down, shut up, and listen. They were taught to be like robots. Perhaps it's no coincidence that some of our society's most creative people are school dropouts. People like Thomas Edison, Steve Jobs, Aretha Franklin, Richard Branson, and many, many more school dropouts. If you put creativity into Amazon.com, you get 60,000 titles. 60,000 titles. What I'm going to show you today are two creativity techniques that will make you into an out-of-the-box thinker so that you can solve problems like Leonardo da Vinci. By the way, Leonardo's friends call him Leonard. <laughs> and then I'm going to show you a technique called mind mapping. Mind mapping is like brainstorming on steroids. And it, I'm going to show you how to solve very difficult problems. For instance, how to sell ice coolers to Eskimos. <laughs> We're going to do it. <laughs> and you can use it for an even more difficult problem. How to get your partner to take out the garbage. <laughs> then I'm going to show you lateral thinking. Lateral thinking is thinking way outside of the box. And I'm going to show you how the invention of the automobile depended on lateral thinking. A few of you flew here today. Imagine if you were on your flight. Let's put you on a United Airlines flight. You're seated comfortably, getting ready for takeoff. And suddenly, a security force comes in, and they drag you off the plane. That actually happened a year ago. And it upset me so bad that I decided to use mind mapping to try to stop it from ever happening again. I used mind mapping to write an op-ed that appeared in the Los Angeles Times. And we're going to do that together. Here's how it works. This is mind mapping. You start with a, you start with the word United Airlines. The rule on mind mapping is there are no rules. Anything goes. You suspend judgment. It's like a Rorschach test. It's like free association. You look at United, everybody. Think of th what's the first thing that comes in your mind. What do you think of? 
I thought of luggage. <laughs> and now you look at luggage. You do the same free association. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? What's in your head? I thought of lost <laughs> and heavy. Now you keep going. What's the next thing that comes to mind? I thought of flying. Now, like I said, you suspend judgment. You go crazy. You free associate. You go nuts. There's no rules. I thought of flying houses. <laughs> now here's where a robot or AI would say, illogical, does not compute. But the human brain can do this. Stay with me. Then I thought of the movie Up. <laughs> then I thought of The Wizard of Oz and Dorothy and the witch. Now, you keep doing this mind mapping until you can't stand it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> And then you step back and you look for a connection. He was like lost luggage. No, that won't work. He was like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. He was just trying to get home. And the United Airlines policy was like the Wicked Witch. <laughs> and I pitched that to the LA Times and they said, very creative. What do you do for a living? <laughs> United's changed their policy. They don't drag passengers anymore. Wow. Now we're going to use mind mapping to sell ice coolers to Eskimos, OK? It sounds impossible. But when I do this with my students and we finish, they say to me, Curtis, how could an Eskimo possibly live without an ice cooler? <laughs> That's the power of mind mapping. Same approach. We start with Eskimos. First thing that comes to mind, igloo. Boom. Then I thought of snow, and I thought of my cold butt. <laughs> like when I go snow camping. Then I thought of food. I thought of an Eskimo's food is kind of smelly, stinky fish. And it can freeze. And I thought about them having water. Water can freeze. It's salty. And I thought one more thing, polar bears, OK? So this is advanced mind mapping. This one is done. We're going to ice cooler. Ice cooler, I thought of cold. Then I thought of beer and wine. It's thirsty. Next, I thought if it insulates things and keeps things warm. You keep building this mind map, and now you have two. OK, we're advanced now. And you look at the connection. Do you see a connection? Here's what I saw. Keeping things warm, Eskimos have to deal with frozen food and frozen water. One reason an Eskimo would need an ice cooler, it keeps their food from freezing and it keeps their water from freezing. Another connection, an ice cooler is like a chair. It solves the cold butt problem. The next connection. <laughs> It seals in smells. It's kind of like a Ziploc bag. It keeps polar bears from smelling me. So to sum up, ice coolers keep, for an Eskimo, keep my food from freezing, keep my water from freezing, keep my butt from freezing, and they keep me from becoming dinner for a polar bear. <laughs> All right. This is lateral thinking. And this is a piston, OK? How many drove here in a car today? All right. Somebody's not going to be hitting on all cylinders on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> so in the history of piston design, people got very creative. And the problem was, how to fit the piston into these holes. And the way a piston works for review, it goes up into a cylinder. There's an explosion that drives the piston out. And this part, the bottom part, is connected to the wheels of your car. And the wheels go round and round. <laughs> the original piston designers worked very hard at designing these, these massive machines. 
as big as a house that would grind the piston to fit it exactly into those holes. And they were very creative about that. They had all kinds of inventions, hundreds of patents of how to make grinding machines to fit the pistons in. And half the pistons had to be thrown away. They were too small. Then an innovator this is where the lateral thinking comes in, took a lateral, this is why it's called lateral thinking, took a lateral step. He said, let's make the pistons too small. And everyone said, that's insane. And they're back working on the machines. He said, no, make the pistons too small and use a ring to fill in the space. If they had kept machining these to fit perfectly, automobiles would cost $100,000 each. But because of this lateral move, an inventor came up with the piston ring. Now, you could do another lateral move. You think another method of propulsion. No piston, horse. <laughs> okay? Another lateral move would be no engine, I'm sorry, no piston, wankel engine. Mazda actually had an engine that spun round and round, no piston. And finally, the big step, no motor, no engine, no engine at all, electric motor, Tesla and the other companies. The electric car was invented 30 years before the gasoline car. My mission, and I hope it can be your mission too, is to remember everyone is born super creative. We need to get our schools to change so that they can teach our students and this small baby to stay creative so that they can beat out robots and AI for jobs in the future. Thank you.